When purchasing a new bow, we're actually going to be having a very similar process to the one I described when purchasing a new cello. You know, just this idea of doing it very organized, you know, keeping notes of all, all the feelings you have when you try each bow. And also, really important again, to reduce your ear fatigue by not playing too much on any individual bow, but really trying to do a quick comparison between lots of bows. So if you go to your local bow or instrument shop, you know, the first question they're going to ask you is what is your price range? So you decide, you know, what's the most you're willing to spend? And then, um, and then pretty much from there, they'll have like, you know, a selection of things to choose from already. Um, different bows have different, you know, strengths and weaknesses. Some bows have like a really great staccato. <laughs> bounce really easy. Other bows just have a really rich sound, you know, for like a slow melody. Um, and I think you'll be very surprised how much the bow affects the, the sound of your cello. And I, like when I got a new cello last year, it was also time for me to get a new bow. And so I tried to get a bow that matched my cello. And that's something to keep in mind that the strengths and weaknesses of your cello can be hopefully complementary to the strengths and weaknesses of your bow. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind, that a bow that works great for somebody else with their cello may not be the best option for your cello. But, uh, but basically, the kinds of differences you'll feel when trying different bows uh, often have to do with the weight of the bow. There's like a, a range of like acceptable weights uh, for a bow, and they're usually talked about in like grams. And so like some bows are a few grams heavier or a few grams lighter. And then in addition to like the overall weight, there's a, so that people will talk about the balance of a bow. Like is most of the weight towards the frog or does the tip feel heavy? And, uh, and again, everybody's going to have different preferences. You know, a heavy tip is going to help you when you're playing like long soaring melodies because you're going to benefit from the weight. The weight at the end of the bow is going to help you keep like a strong sound. But if the tip is like too heavy, it might significantly compromise like quick string crossings like you might encounter in Bach. <laughs> And if you've got a lot of weight hanging out at the end of the bow, it can be more difficult to maneuver. So there's a lot of, you know, different strengths and weaknesses that any bow will offer. And so again, like trying a cello, your best plan of attack is to have like a list of like four or five very specific bow techniques that you want to test each of the bows you're trying out with. And so I would say the good things to try out are very similar to the kinds of things we'd be looking for in a cello. Like you want something slow and melodic, like the swan. You want to try something with a nice spiccato to see how the bounce works. Or just like a general staccato. And you'll notice as you're like trying like just a spiccato stroke on a bunch of different bows that like because of the balance of weight you know on some bows the spiccato may work brilliantly right here but like on the next bow like the balance point might actually be like here or here and so it's not a matter of just finding what works best for you, but there's also a process of finding what, you know, how does the bow work best for itself and seeing if you're comfortable, if, if you're able to find it, A, and B, if you're comfortable with that. So we've got something slow and melodic. We've got something bouncy and spiccato. Um, again, for me, a big part of my bow search was finding something that sounded good chopping. And again, like you'll be surprised how much of a difference the bow will make 
uh, into how it chops. But just finding some pattern that you can repeat on all instruments is going to be your way forward. Um, other things to try on the bow, um, yeah, you know, just trying it on all the strings, you know, even kind of duplicating the kinds of exercises we do um, when trying out a cello. Just trying a few techniques on all the strings. Uh, and then taking notes and just moving on to the next bow really quickly so that your ear doesn't fatigue and start to like, because if you try 10 bows and you don't take notes, you're going to look at them on the table and you'll be like, I don't remember any of them. I guess I have to try them again. And not only will you lose all that time, but like you just get tired of, of focusing. So try and stay organized. You know, a good bow could cost, you know, like a good, like I was... Up until when I bought a bow last year, uh, I bought a bow at the end of high school for college and my early career. And those bows were between like $500 and $3,000. And so you can get a really good bow within that range. Um, and then if you up that range, you know, up to like, you know, $10,000, $10, you're going to start getting some much better bows uh, for like professional level playing. Uh, bows can be fascinatingly expensive. Um, I was at a shop in, at home in Boston the other day, just getting this cello bridge replaced actually. And anyway, the staff there was letting me try some bows and there was a bow there that I loved. And I looked at the price and it was $40,000 for a bow. And like, that's not even the most expensive bow that you, know, that you can find. So the range and quality of bow is, is amazing. And if you have a lot of money, you can buy a really nice bow. Uh, you don't need a really nice bow um, that's $40,000 in order to be a successful musician. I myself do not have a bow anywhere anywhere near that price. Um, but in contrast to like our standard bow search, um, I would also just point out that carbon fiber bows are also shockingly good. Um, and there's a couple companies that make carbon fiber bows. Uh, Coda, the Coda Bow Company comes to mind. Um, and so uh, carbon fiber bows are um, not only like pretty much indestructible, which is great, but they uh, tend to be really great for like fast playing and for bouncy playing and for chopping and stuff. Uh, I, I, I think they're potentially notorious for not being as great for like slow melodic playing. But I think having like a, a carbon fiber bow, they, they usually only cost like one or $200. Um, that's a really, really great bow to have as like a backup bow. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind um, in addition to what will be your primary bow. But um, the bow can have as much personality and uniqueness as the instrument, and it's pretty amazing how much of a difference it makes. And so it's really gonna depend on how it feels the playability for you. You know, I feel like the playability of the instrument is more adjustable through changing the strings and the bridge. Uh, so you want to focus on a cello that sounds good, potentially more than a cello that feels good. But when it comes to the bow, there's not much you can change with the bow. So you should really focus on the playability of a bow and that it feels good while you're playing. Um, and I think that's, that's going to uh, make a big difference for you, you know, in the many, many hours that you'll be playing with it. So if you, if you are on a bow search, feel free to, to take some videos at your local shop and send them to me through your video submission and I can try and weigh in and see if, uh, if you found one that looks worth keeping. <laughs>